Hello everybody, welcome to this instruction video. This video is in preparation of the Schepjes Call 2016 called Last Dance on the Beach. It's been designed by Marinka Slimp and a number of crochet designers that knew Marinka well and were close to her. We're making a test piece to test for gauge before starting the actual crochet along. Now don't think you don't need to do this because your tension is always the same etc. Trust me, in this situation you do need the gauge piece. The reason is that the crochet along we're making, every square has been designed by a different designer with a different tension, a different gauge, a different stitch variations. And there's just going to be so much room for variation that you're going to need a test piece to check and measure every square that you're making against. So take the time to make this test piece. Don't think I don't need it. If you're using Color Crafter yarn you're going to be making your test piece using a 4mm hook. If you're using the Merino Soft yarn you're going to be doing your gauge with a 4.5mm hook. As the crochet along continues you'll notice that there might be certain squares where you should change your hook size or maybe even add a few stitches or add a few rows, subtract a few rows. You're going to have to kind of co-create your own design as we go along. And this has to do with the nature of this crochet along that's basically been designed by 12 different designers. So take the time to make this test piece. You're really going to be happy that you did when you get to actually making the squares for this crochet along. I'll be taking you again step by step through making the test piece and when you're ready with this we can start with the actual crochet along. I'm first going to show you how to make your gauge swatch, that's this light one, and then I'll show you how to correct for size in case your gauge swatches aren't the right size. So if your width and is for example correct but not your height or if your width and height is the problem. So first we'll do the gauge swatch and then we'll look at different issues that can arise between making the same gauge swatch. To start by making a loop, it's a regular slip knot, put this on your hook and now make chain 30. It's one, two, three, four, five, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, 30. So we now have 30 chain stitches. What we're now going to do is we're going to work half trebles in every chain stitch starting in the third chain from the from the end. So going one, two, three, so in the third from the end, we're going to make a half treble. And you're going to continue like this in each and every chain stitch going to make a half treble crochet until you get to the other side and that will make 28 half trebles in total. Make a half treble in every chain stitch. Three more to go. So making a half treble on every stitch. So one Two, and then on the final, this first chain stitch we make a half treble. We now have 28 stitches in total here, where we don't count that chain 2 at the beginning as a stitch. For round 2, chain 2, turn your work. This first chain 2 does not count as a stitch. So in the very first stitch, that's going to be that stitch there, we're going to make a half treble again. One. This is again the first of 28 half trebles. In each and every stitch you make a half treble until you get to the other side. You can see here how your stitches are forming. To so make a half treble in every stitch. Almost to the end row 2, still make a half treble on every stitch through both loops of the stitch and 
what's important is that you don't forget this last stitch here because otherwise your work is going to go skew so this is that stitch there also make a half treble in that stitch and now you have again made 28 stitches and the chain 2 at the beginning okay, what you've just done so row 2 you're going to repeat until you have done 22 rows in total I'll show you the beginning of the row once more chain 2 turn so now you're going to start row 3 in the very first stitch you work a half treble and in each next stitch also till you get to the end I'll show you the end of row 3 once more as well as the start of row 4 then I'll make a jump in the video because we're going to be making an edge around the, um, the, the, the gauge piece that we're making make a half treble on every stitch until you get to the other side almost to the end the last number few half trebles here on row 3 so this one and now it's again important not to miss this last stitch that's this stitch here this is your last stitch to work on now you've completed row 3 if you're ever in doubt as to whether or not you need a stitch here just count your stitches because you should have 28 here so if you count all of these and you have 27 then you know okay I haven't done that last stitch yet so for row 4 again chain 2 turn and this, in the first stitch that's this stitch here work a half treble you're going to continue like this working half trebles and be mindful of not forgetting the last stitch until you've made in total 22 rows so, you're, so I'm now busy with row 4 so you need to do quite a few more of these and it's easiest to count your stitches by rows of 2 I'll just show you from the front what I mean so if you look at it your work here this is the, the front of your work you see this this um, edge here that's for your first two rows you now have four so you count them per two is the easiest so two four and then six eight etc so continue like this until you've made 22 rows in total so I'm going to make a jump in the video and then we'll go towards making the edge around this um, gauge piece So I've now worked 22 rows in total and we're now going to work an edge of double crochets around this test piece. I'm going to do it chain one and turn my work to have your the right side facing you. you just check your tail should be at the bottom left of your of your work then you have the right side facing you. So I'm going to start by making 26 double crochets on this edge now you of course have 28 stitches here I'm going to be using the last stitch for the corner so you can either skip a stitch here somewhere for example the first stitch or do for example a double crochet two together it's also an option I'm going to skip the first stitch so I'm going to skip that stitch and go on to the next one so that way I've now done minus one on the stitch count then work a single crochet on every stitch and when you get to the last stitch you're going to use that for the corner which are three double crochets in that corner so you're working 26 on this edge you're going to work 26 double crochets actually on, e on each of these four edges and in the corner you do three double crochets and as such it's not very critical exactly where you place these double crochets because this is your test piece of course when you're doing the real um, squares for the uh, for the actual cull it is 
important that you have everything at the right place but at this point because it's your test piece it's doesn't it's not a matter of life and death or anything and I'm almost to the last stitch and this one and now I have one stitch left that's stitch number 28 for me now of course 27 because I've skipped the first stitch I'm going to use this for the corner so in this stitch I'm going to make three double crochet so that's one two three double crochets turn your work and now you have the um, edge the end of the rows facing that you're going to be working into these and you're going to have to work 26 double crochets along this edge and you're going to have to kind of eyeball it and space it evenly and again like I also said this isn't incredibly critical exactly where you place them so just punch your hook in there somewhere and work your double crochets just space them a little bit evenly so it's you have 22 rows and you need to make 26 stitches so it's not exactly one stitch per row you kind of need to fudge a few extra in there somewhere but luckily it's not um, because this is not going to be part of your blanket it's not very critical exactly where you place these stitches this is your uh, this is purely for gauge to be continue measuring almost to the end just eyeballing these last few stitches just count your stitches make sure you have 26 like so now we're going to work a corner again I'm going to use this first stitch here for my corner. So I'm going to work three double crochets in that first stitch. And this is to uh, go around the corner and then turn your work. And now you're again going to work 26 double crochets here on this edge. And now you're going to be working in the chain stitches from the beginning. And I'm again going to skip that first stitch and start working in the second and work a single crochet on every stitch. So just push your crochet hook through the entire it's basically in the same space where you already have this the the stitch because on this side you already have that half treble and then on the other side you're making the single the, the double crochet. And work again 26 stitches until you get to the other side and then you have a corner again in the last because the last stitch number 28 in this case I'm going to use again for the corner just like I did at the beginning stitch that's this one here and now we're to the end and again here make 20 make three sorry three double crochets for the corner three turn your work now you're again looking at the end of this of, of the rows on one side you do exactly the same on this side as you did here so eyeballing your work divide 26 Sing double crochets along this edge. That's going to be one, two, and then when you get to the other side, you still need to work your last corner. So, also here, distribute 26 double crochets evenly along the edge.
first stitch and one more stitch and then uh, there we go and now I still need to make the corner and because you've got the chain one right from the beginning there this might be a little tricky but just pick a spot somewhere and work your last three stitches for the corner and then close with a slip stitch on your first stitch your first double crochet now you can cut your yarn and tie off you see here three gauge swatches works in exactly the same stitch count so they all have the same number of stitches and have the same number of rows yet they're not the same size you can see here that they're clearly different heights they are the same width but not the same height and this has to do with the way you make your stitches so the, and it specifically refers to a, your first loop on your hook, the golden loop. I'll show you how to adjust for these kind of differences and this is significant when you're working to size because you can change your hook size to, comp to compensate for width but you're not going to adjust for height by changing your hook size. You need to change the way you work your stitches to correct for this difference. So I'll show you how to compensate for this by making your stitches in just a slightly different way. So how to adjust for your stitch size. I have here a little um, test piece so this is just to show you how to comp compensate for that golden loop. If you're making a stitch, any stitch, you'll, let's say you're doing a half treble, you yarn over and you insert into the stitch, and you pick up a loop and then you yarn over and you take off. Now the golden loop, the loop that's determining the height of your stitches is this first loop on your hook here. It's this loop. And depending on what you do with this first loop, your stitches become taller or shorter. We all have a certain natural way of doing this. And some people tend to really pull back on this yarn, so called some people call them yankers, that you really yank this yarn back. You can see if, if I'm doing that how small this loop is becoming. And because I'm having a lot of tension on this yarn, if I now yarn over and pull through, my stitch is becoming reasonably short. So I'll show you again. I'm making this stitch and now as, as I open up I pull back on this yarn and I'm making my stitch shorter if I yarn over and make the stitch. Other people they yarn over and they keep their hook very much on the on the level of their work. For example you could also work more in this direction or more in this direction. If you keep your hook reasonably on top of your work, your so-called riding your work and then your stitches tend to be just a little bit taller. So if you do it like this, you have the stitches are just a little taller than they are for a yanker. You can see how this loop is just a little bit higher. But then there are people, so-called lifters, let me yarn over and make a stitch. And what they do is they lift up this loop and now make the stitch. And then this stitch is considerably higher than that stitch and especially a lot higher than those yanker stitches we had at the beginning. So I've got these three stitches here and this one is shorter in the middle and the longest. So if I yarn over and make a lifter stitch and a lifter stitch can be some people lift it really high like really up to here and then make a stitch and you can see how that stitch is really considerably a lot much longer than this stitch and we all have a natural way of making our stitches and as such there's nothing wrong with the way you make a stitch but if you're trying to work to gauge the way you you deal with with the height of this stitch really determines the gauge of your final piece. So if you have a tendency to for example pull a lot on that 
on this thread. Your stitches are going to be shorter. And if you have a tendency to lift your loop, it's going to be much longer. And by changing the way you make those stitches and the way you work with that first loop, you can change the gauge on your piece. So making it higher or shorter, making your stitches higher or shorter. So I'll just show you again. If, you're, if your stitches are too high, it means you're most probably doing this. You're lifting your stitch up. Try to do that just a little less. If your stitches are too short, you're most probably pulling this loop tight. Don't do that. Just let the yarn go just a little bit. And maybe you are a rider and your loops are really down here. Maybe that's good in, in, in this case, maybe not. Depends on, on your personal way of making the rest of your stitches. But give yourself a bit more room or a bit less room depending on how it's going. My, pers my, my natural way of working, I'm, in, I'm somewhere between a rider and a lifter. That's my, my you see when I make my stitches, if I don't do anything, that, that, that I'm not exactly on my work, but I'm not exactly high either. I'm kind of a little bit in between here. And I found that that um, works well with most designs for gauge. So, but especially if you're a lifter and you go really high like this, you, you're almost probably going to have to adapt your stitches and make them just a little shorter. You see how, how high these stitches are compared to the others. You see these two again are much higher than what's happening here at the beginning of the row. So consistency is what you're going for and also adapt for the correct stitch height by paying attention to the way that you deal with this first loop on your hook. And this is for all stitches you're making, whether it's a double crochet or a treble or a double treble. This loop is always the one that's going to determine how high your stitches are. So deal with this loop and adjust if needed, especially if your swatches are the correct width but they're not the correct height. This is the way to adjust for that. Brings us to the end of making the test gauge piece. If you use Color Crafter yarn, you'll have a square of about 18 centimeters. If you use the Merino Soft, one of about 19 centimeters. And that is also your block size. So block your Color Crafter to 18 centimeters and your Merino to 19 centimeters. You can also see there's ever so slight difference between these two. They vary. It's about a centimeter between the two. Now, what's important is that all the squares you're going to be making after this should have the size that you're going to be using for blocking. So the 18 or 19 centimeters. And if you make another square and it's considerably larger or smaller, you should consider changing a hook size to get it all to the same size. So block on 18 centimeters or 19 centimeters for Color Crafter or Merino Soft and then we're ready to start the first pattern.